Dancing.com. And today I wanted to share with you um, some tips about buying um, generic or no brand poles. The good things about them, the bad things that you can run into. So hopefully it can help you find a no brand pole if you don't plan on buying a brand name. Now, before I get started, I just want to be clear that I do recommend brand name poles, and I personally sell um, both no brand and X poles. And, um, and so I do recommend buying an X pole if you um, can afford it. But the bottom line is, is that a lot of people can't, and I understand that. I was one of them when I first opened my studio. Um, a lot of people who follow me already know that I could not afford to buy X poles when I first opened my studio. So. I bought no brand poles and I learned a lot. I made a ton of mistakes. And so just before I threw away all my crappy poles, I figured I would remake an old video that I made last year um, that's a little bit better lighting and better clarity about what to look for in your um, no brand pole so that you can get a safe one because safeties matter. When you buying a no brand pole, don't expect perfection. They are no brand, no name poles. So you're not gonna get a perfect pole. Most of us know that, that's why it's discounted. However, you do not have to compromise safety and you should not compromise safety, especially when it comes to pole dancing. So, to get started, I'll just work from the dome all the way down to the base and just kind of explain to you what I have discovered over the years so you know what to look for. Um, starting at the dome, you're gonna have uh, They all look identical. Okay. I'll just pull them. This one has a noisy piece inside of it. Okay. There's that one. We have this dome. And we have this dome. Now, um, these domes, what you want to look for is um, it doesn't matter if they're straight or if they're dished out. Um, they're both very good quality. Um, the thing that you want to look for is uh, good bearings, and it's going to be really hard to tell whether the bearings are good. Um, all the photos for these generic poles look virtually identical. That's a problem. It's hard to tell whether you're getting good parts or bad parts, especially with bearings. Okay, bearings come in all different colors. Black, I've even bought some that are blue, as you can tell. Um, this one is gold or silver. So the main thing that you want to look for is the rubber on the back side of the dome. Okay? It needs to be soft and pliable so that if the pole slips, it will grip the ceiling. Um, some of these poles have rubber, but the rubber is hard. Now this is very soft. This is good rubber that you see right here. It doesn't matter what color it is, the softness matters. Okay? Now you can tell the back of this pole, I can tap on that, and it, it's so hard. Like, it's not going to hurt anything. If I go like this on the floor, you can tell, like, it slides, like, so easy. It's not going to rip the ceiling. This one, on the other hand, with the good rubber, you can tell, like, if it slips, it's not going anywhere. So that softness is critical, okay? The other thing that you notice, otherwise they look pretty identical, is the size of the dome. And again, it's hard to tell in pictures the size of the dome that you're getting because these all look identical. But if you notice the difference here, this one is markedly bigger, okay? You want a bigger dome. Um, an extra wide dome sometimes is how they list it, but um, this one is, I'm not sure exactly how wide it is, um, but you just want a wide dome so that it will um, cover more area on the ceiling and that makes it more stable, okay? So that's what to look for. The bearing should be um, easily spinnable on the inside. And when I spin this one, it doesn't like to turn very well. When I spin this one, it turns really easy and it's very greasy. You can see that it instantly made my finger black and that's good. It should be a very good, well-greased bearing, okay? So that's the domes. Um, let me put these back together real quick. Um, the next piece that you'll want to look out for moving down the pole is this little piece right here that sits inside the adjuster cover. Cover, and this is the piece that sits inside your adjuster cover to 
hold the um, just adjuster cover up. So it comes up and basically covers up this adjuster bar, which adjusts the height of the pole to your ceiling, okay? So with this piece, um, it holds this up and it's screwed usually with two Phillips screws to the top of the pole. So when you climb the pole, you actually be pulling down on this adjuster cover when you go to climb the pole. Now, um, some of these, they actually, um, they, the best ones are made with metal. Um, but if you notice, I have a pole here. And it looks like metal, but it's not, it's plastic. And the thing about the plastic one is, is that over time, as you go and climb the pole and you pull down on this adjuster cover, well, the plastic is going to break, and if you're holding on to the adjuster cover, you're going to come sliding down that pole so fast when it breaks. So you don't want this made of plastic. And again, like you can see, they've polished it, and it's so hard to tell whether it's metal or not, okay? But this really needs to be metal. In addition, it should have Phillips screws in it. Um, this one you can tell, it's kind of stuck on there, I can't get it off. So let me do a close up for you. Okay, as you can tell, um, this one's made of metal. This one's made of plastic. You can tell it's, <laughs> the weight difference is huge. But they're, they're hard to tell which one's made of which in the package, so just be aware of that. This right here is what I want you to note. This is made of metal. But if you notice, it's got these little knobs on it that just push in, like it pushes in, that you don't want that. You want, you want the Phillips screw that you can see there, okay? That screw is going to hold the adjuster cover up like this. So as you can tell, the adjuster cover slides up and it's going to cover up the adjuster bar. Okay, so the one that has what I was just showing you, that has the one that you push in, the knobs that I showed to you that you push in and they pop back out automatically. When this adjuster cover slides up the pole to cover up the adjuster bar and slide into place, it just pushes over it and kind of snaps into place those little knobs pop out into the hole on the adjuster cover and kind of hold it in place, right? It's there. But the thing is, is that when you go to climb this pole, which you will in pole dancing, and you go to pull down on this thing, it comes right off. And it's kind of the same hazard as the plastic one. In the plastic one, if those little Phillips screws break that plastic, which they do, same concept. This is going to pull down, and if you're hanging on to it, you're going down the pole too. Okay, don't do that. So, um, moving down the pole, you should next get a pole that's actually made out of good metal. Now, they cheapen these poles by making the pole very thin. Some of these poles weigh, you know, 10 pounds lighter than a good professional made pole. And um, to give you an example, I have two extensions here. They're both 125 mm extensions, but if you notice, this one is a lot thinner than this one, okay? This is markedly thicker and heavier. This is how they cheapen the poles, and this is why they bend when you try and invert on them, is because they're not made to support heavy body weights, okay? You want to find a pole that is made of thick, heavy-duty metal, okay? And so, when they make those poles and they bend. You know, they're made of thin metal. This is one of my bent poles. And uh, that I bought. I thought it was a great pole, great deal. It cost me $150, $149.99, I believe. And I got it. And um, I don't know if I can turn it, you can see here, but um, it's kind of hard to tell because it's not on the base. But it's very bent. And also, if I shake it, if you hear that, it's the joint rattling. And that's because like the joints aren't very tight in this and it, it rattles and moves, okay? So you need a pole that's made of good, thick metal. In addition, the chrome needs to be in good shape. They actually
actually, um, the chrome all looks like identical, but some of the poles, it's not plated well, and the chrome chips off, and it's actually cut me while I pull it. So, you're looking here at a, a pole, and you can tell the chrome has peeled off, okay? And when I was dancing and sliding down the pole, this, this particular pole actually cut me. So, I mean, you can tell that it's all the way around. And both the extensions started peeling later on down the road. Um, it's not a good pole. And you can tell, like, here's another pole that's not chipping. And you can tell they look, you know, virtually identical. Both got the hole in the same spot. And everything's just, this one's not very good quality. Okay. Next, moving down the pole would be the um, base parts. Okay. You're going to notice that these base parts, um, all look identical too. They basically have a um, solid metal piece that the pole slides onto, and they also have rubber on the bottom. And the thing you need to know about these is the same as the dome. The rubber on the bottom has to be soft and pliable, and it has to be glued on well. For the same reason, if you push on this thing, it shouldn't budge, okay? For example, I have a base right here, and if you look at the rubber on the bottom of this one, I'll get a little closer. They're pretty different. And the thing is about this one, is that it's, it's sort of soft, but it's not as soft as this. If you push on it, you can tell. It even whistles, slides. And then in addition, it's not glued on well. I can just peel it right off. In no way is this safe to pull bands on because if it was to slip, you know, if the whole pole's gonna slide and that's not what you want. You could have an accident. So, um, again, watch for the rubber on the bottom of the bases. In addition, the bearings. And I know, like, it's hard to tell what bearings are good, but I've actually gotten quite a few poles and the bearings go bad in them within six months flat. Like they won't turn anymore, um, something settles weird. I had a machine guy come in and fix all of my poles that weren't spinning like they were generic poles. And um, he said they were just made poorly. And so he made this little metal piece that you see right here for me to put inside my poles. Now if you have a pole, that is locked up and isn't spinning on you. I, this may or may not be the reason, and just, God forbid, don't buy one that does this. Um, but you can just tell it's just a little thin piece of metal, and it sits on top of the bearing like this and creates space between the base and the bearing. And that's because whoever created it didn't allow that space, and so the metal crashed down on top of the bearing and basically seized the bearing up. I'm not a machine shop person, and I'm not an expert on how these things work, but I just do know that good bearings make a difference and you want a pole that's not gonna, you know, stop spinning in six months, right? So, those are things to look for in a pole. I hope that helps you out. Some of these poles, you're gonna find good qualities in them, but then they'll have some of the bad qualities. You're gonna get like a mix of different things. Some will have a good dome, but they have bad base parts. You know, some will have a bad dome, but the pole is very made very well and it's professional grade and it's thick. It's kind of hard to tell to get all of the good pieces in one pole. If you don't want to look for a pole anymore, I do sell an off-brand pole that is affordable that has all of the good qualities that I look for in a pole here and I consider, you know, safe for home use on my website at uh, polefitnessdancing.com. Otherwise, this is what you look for. Please be safe out there and um, 